Yeah, we're giving away a Rolex, and that's awesome. I'm really excited about it. But I have to complain a little bit about the brand. I mean, they've really just abused a decent American company. Boom, watch fan. What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris watch shop. And today I'm gonna to be telling you guys about a Rolex scandal and how their legal team may have went a bit too far. All right, today I'm actually not wearing a Rolex. I know, burn me at the stake, I'm a witch, but I am wearing a pretty incredible watch. Um, th I'm actually bringing, it brings a smile to my face. This is a vintage 1940s uh, Reverso. Um, it was, JLC Reverso was introduced in 1931, so this is a very early model. They did not manufacture many of these watches at the time, so finding an original early Reverso was very, very difficult. And this one's fantastic. Uh, originally the dial was black, but it is, is changed to a very, very even chocolate brown. All of the luminous paint is still very much intact. Uh, the case is, is, is immaculate. This is a fantastic watch, period end. A true watch collector's watch. And yes, it is available in the Theo and Harris watch shop, along with a host of other pieces from Rolex and from Omega, sometimes AP and Paddock. Head on over there to take care of all of your vintage watch needs. And the topic of vintage watches is a perfect segue into today's conversation. And before we get into the real meat of what had happened here legally over the last year, let me introduce to you a company. It's called La California, or it's French for the Californian. The Californian is, or rather was, a retailer of custom watches, particularly from Rolex and Cartier. In a nutshell, what they would do is buy uh, vintage and pre-owned Rolexes, specifically uh, dates, date justs, uh, and Daytonas even, or on the Cartier end, Cartier tanks, and they would disassemble them and recolor them. They would turn their maybe boring to some silver dials, yellow or pink or blue. They would turn hands into pink. Is it my taste what they would do? No, not particularly. I know that I wouldn't have purchased a Californian watch, but I will say that I did notice the brand catching on over the last few years and I liked it. I like to see, you know, more Rolexes on the wrists of more people. I like to see the community of people that actually enjoy these watches, particularly on the vintage end, grow. I actually saw one of these watches at Oktoberfest last year and it brought a smile to my face. So while it's not my exact cup of tea, I would prefer a Stella Dial or one of the new OPs or, or many other watches to really fill uh, my need for color, uh, I still admire what this company has done. Now, the Californian is not the only customizer of watches, like from Rolex, for example. You've got Bamford, a very famous customizer of watches. It goes back quite a while, a well respected company in many circles. Uh, you've got Artisans de Genève, maybe the leader in the space of customized Rolexes. Artisans de Genève, unlike Bamford and unlike uh, Californian, uh, doesn't just stop at color correction. Uh, Artisans de Genève actually, from top to bottom, basically, rebuilds watches. It changes finishes and cases and dials. Um, a similar company, which I believe is now uh, defunct, was Tempest Machina, a watch that, that I really got close with for, for a couple of years back in, I'd say, 2017, 2018. It's another company that was buying new Rolexes and, and you know, reimagining them. Uh, gilt dials, domed crystals, uh, removing the crown guards in the case. Now, for, you know, watch people, people who are really passionate about this hobby, um, when you look at something that that is really rebuilt, something that took a lot of effort, whether it's your cup of tea or not, you kind of respect it. You admire that someone out there would put the time into this hobby. So while maybe the Artisan de Genève uh, special edition for Spike Lee wasn't my watch, it wasn't the one watch I was going to buy this year, I looked at it and said, wow, you know, R&D went into this. Uh, take my hat off to you guys. So back to the point. The Californian is not the only customizer of watches in the space. In fact, they're not even the most famous. But despite that, in November of 2019, Rolex opened up a lawsuit in the state of California, claiming that the Californian was manufacturing counterfeit watches that infringed on their trademark. In their complaint, Rolex argued that the act of swapping out the parts inherently means that the new watches no longer attain the quote unquote aesthetic of the original Rolex, and that Rolex can no longer assure these watches quote unquote quality and performance. Now, both of those points are of course ridiculous, Ridiculous. Uh, first, to attaining the aesthetic. Uh, the whole point is that the brand is trying to veer away from much of your aesthetic. They're trying
trying to keep the fundamental you know, design principles, the oyster case of Rolex, the movements of Rolex, which are known for their robustness, but of course, building on that, adding personality. And like we said, for better or worse, maybe pink hands aren't your thing, but a pink hand you know, custom Rolex is cooler than just some Joe Schmo new watch. Now moving away from the aesthetic is the entire point. It's their entire business model and I don't see anything wrong with that. Now to point number two, uh, that Rolex can no longer stand behind the quality of the watch. Well, of course not. And Rolex doesn't stand behind the quality of any of their old watches. If I bring in my date just to Rolex, Rolex isn't just covered under a service warranty. They'll hit me with a thousand dollar bill despite the fact the watch is in perfect operational condition. This is basically a big ongoing joke in the vintage watch industry. You could take in the most fantastic vintage Daytona or Date 8 or Submariner and believe you me, Rolex will not just hit you with a fantastically large bill, but they will insist that your faded bezel needs to be replaced and your corroded dial that needs to be swapped for a new service replacement. Rolex is actually one of the worst places you can bring a vintage Rolex to and that sounds absolutely ridiculous and insane but it is certainly an ongoing joke in the vintage watch community. Now the same does not apply for new or modern pre-owned watches. Rolex does have a great service department and they're a great company but they are extremely well known for being horrible in the vintage world. So uh, there is really no difference between uh, the Californians vintage altered watches and any Anyone else's vintage altar watches, Rolex does not stand behind them just because they're Rolex. Now here's a real funny joke uh, to prove the, the uh, lack of quality and performance. Rolex cited two examples of the Californian watches they examined in which the bezels did not fit properly. Who the heck knows what that means? I think I would need a much more specific explanation and the problem with, with lawsuits that involve watches, and I've been involved in a couple where I have actually sued dealers, is because it's such a technical space, a lot of the courts, unless you bring in your own experts, a lot of the courts kind of have to shrug their shoulders in ignorance and they say, okay, well, if Rolex says the bezel doesn't fit, I guess that's a problem. Um, but, but really, who knows what that means? There were absolutely no more specifics in, in that complaint. Uh, but to me, it, it definitely goes to show, if that was their example of poor quality and performance, it goes to show that really the claim didn't hold much water to begin with. Now, Rolex's complaint wasn't all hogwash. I think that they really did have one interesting, maybe even compelling point here, and I'll read. The Californian uses the Rolex registered trademarks to advertise and promote their watches in a manner which is likely to cause consumer confusion and to deceive consumers into believing that the defendant's products, the defendant being the Californian, and services are in some way authorized, sanctioned, or affiliated with Rolex when they're not. Now, I fundamentally disagree with the complaint. The Californians website advertising and marketing in no way claimed that these were new Rolexes under service warranty from Rolex. They had none of that Rolex branding. For example, what do I mean? They didn't have the you know official Rolex logo on their site like you would see from, let's say, a, a genuine authorized dealership. Uh, the Californians website and marketing was set up in many ways to mimic the same marketing that so many vintage watch dealers have. You know, you're explaining this is a Rolex, this watch is from this year, and here are all the technical descriptions. And in their technical descriptions, unlike the vintage watch world in, in a general rule, uh, they would say custom colored blue dial, custom pink hands, you know, all done obviously by them. But to be fair, I can see and understand why Rolex would want the Californian and other brands that produce uh, customized Rolexes to uh, maybe more intentionally and more specifically and explicitly distance themselves from Rolex. Almost like a Surgeon General's warning, these cigarettes will give you cancer. You know, this is not a, a factory Rolex. This watch is not uh, qualified for any Rolex uh, a service, or this watch is not backed by Rolex warranty. I can see that. And then it's the Californian's responsibility to respond to that while using you know that disclosure to respond. Well, we offer our own service. We are a very reliable purveyor of our you know custom watches and you can trust us. And that's their battle, to earn trust with the consumer, which I think they would have success with. That would be a fair judgment. But instead, the judgment came out in June and it has slowly trickled into the mainstream and I think it was quite unfair. So allow me to, to read directly from it. The Californian can no longer reapply Rolex trademarks or indeed use any of the Rolex registered trademarks or any reproduction, counterfeit, copy or colorable imitation of the Rolex registered trademarks in connection with their advertisement, promotion, offering for sale, or sale of its altered Rolex watches. So in short, what does that mean? The Californian can no longer produce their product. They can no longer use the Rolex name, the Rolex crown, or any other recognizable Rolex branding. So what does that do for the Californian? 
well, this is the Californian now. That's it colorful Apple Watch straps. Their entire business has been reduced to what was once just an accoutrement, the straps, to their real offering, the watches. What's kind of funny now, you're actually seeing other brands around the web uh, selling the inventory they may have left of the Californian. So if you actually go around right now to buy a Californian watch, you can buy one if you want, just not from the Californian themselves. They've decimated this company. So why do we care? Well, one, I think it's always interesting to read a decision to know what's going on, both obviously in pop culture and your you know, market, but also legally. What are, what are the battles going on right now? What are the real decision makers fighting over? Number one is always interesting. Um, but two, maybe we shouldn't care. I don't own stock in the California. It's really none of my business. That's their poor fortune and it is what it is. Um, but, and maybe I'm a sucker here, but I can't help but to feel bad you know, I can't help but to feel that Rolex was not just a bit of a bully, but kind of an ass with this case. The entire case seemed quite targeted and almost malicious. The attack against the California wasn't part of Rolex's new sweeping effort to crack down on customizer of their watches. It was, at least as the public knows, just on the Californian. So why? Did the Californian really represent such a major threat that Rolex had to wipe them out? Or were corporate lawyers just bored? Because if it's the latter, then that's really a shame. I think the best theory I have here is this. The lawsuit was filed in November of 2019. Now that's probably around the time that Rolex began to plan their new releases for this year's Basel World, which we now know is filled with colorful oyster perpetuals. Now, while Rolex's Stella dials certainly existed long before the Californian was even an idea, maybe even before the founders of the Californian were even born, they are the bigger players in the moment in that space. Colorful Rolexes, as it stood in 2019, were really kind of owned by the Californian. If you wanted one, that's one of the major stores you would go to. Now, in and of itself, that's a fairly small market, but I think it's quite possible that when Rolex decided they were going to dump in millions and millions and millions of dollars into the launch of these new watches, that they wanted to own the entire space. Now, that's not inherently wrong. I get it. Why should the Californian or anybody else ride the wave that Rolex is about to pay for? I can understand that. But I do think Rolex could have been a bit more delicate. Did they really have to destroy the Californian? I don't think so. I think regulations were probably just much more proper. Anyway, Rolex, I salute you as always. You are the king and everyone else bows down and that kind of does suck sometimes, but I guess you've earned it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you don't know this already, we're actually giving away a Rolex when we hit 100,000 subscribers. All you have to do is subscribe down below and sign up in our giveaway form. Thank you all again for watching and I'll see you all soon.